Hi everyone, my name is Richard Mitchell. I am the organizer of the Tulsa Game Developers here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, if you'd like some more information about Tulsa Game Devs, uh, you'll find it uh, in some of the links uh, below this video. And uh, you can just, you know, Google Tulsa Game Developers and you'll find it. We meet every third Thursday in downtown Tulsa. Uh, and Thanksgiving's coming up, so now is the perfect time to learn how to create your own interactive fiction. Uh, if you don't know what interactive fiction is, it's basically uh, like a choose-your-own-adventure story. Uh, you have your players will read a bit of the story, and then you'll get some choices. So it might be, you know, there's a pirate standing in front of you. Do you swing your sword at it, or do you run away? And based on the choices you make, the story will change. Uh, we're going to be looking at something called Twine, which is an interactive fiction creation platform. It's totally free, and it doesn't require any code whatsoever. You can find it at twinery.org. Uh, and there's the address right there. And uh, it's available on desktop for Windows, OS X, or Linux. Uh, you can also use it entirely online. You can do the whole thing just in your browser. You don't have to uh, install anything extra. And once again, you don't have to use any code. Uh, I'm not going to go over every little thing you can do with it. Um, they have a wiki available right on their front page, uh, which can walk you through lots of different things. They have uh, multiple versions of Twine that have different features. Uh, Twine 2 is the one that's available entirely online. Uh, there is the Twine 2 guide right here in their wiki. And if you just want to get started, you can go right to how to create your first story, and it'll walk you through everything you need to know. But we're just going to make one quick story really quickly just so you can see how this works and you know see some of the potential. So here I am at twinery.org. I'm just going to click use it online. Uh, if you have the desktop versions, obviously you can just fire those up. And here we go. It's a very simple interface right over here plus story, you know, create a new story. So I'm just going to do that. And we're going to call this uh, Susie's Adventure. And the first thing you'll see is here is the first passage of your story. This little square right here it has a rocket ship, which signifies this is the first passage of the story. This is where the story takes off, so to speak. And if you double click this, uh, we're going to rename the passage Intro. And I can click in here, double click to uh, select everything. And I'm going to just say uh, Susie stands in front of a particularly ominous cave. And then down here, I'm going to create some choices for the player. And to do that, I just use some open square brackets. I'll do two of those. And I will say, go into the cave. And I'll close it with square brackets. And you notice these brackets just turned blue. That indicates I've created a choice. Or I'm going to say, do not go into the cave. And what's going to happen when I close this passage is pretty cool. I close it. And Twine has automatically created two new passages that have the names of those choices it just made. So I have a passage go into the cave and a passage do not go into the cave. So I'll click this, double click, go into the cave. I'm going to say, Susie is immediately eaten by a very, very large bear. And now we're going to do a different kind of choice, again, with these open square brackets. And I'll say, you lose, comma, painfully. Play again, question mark. And this time I'm going to have a, a different uh, mark in here to uh, change the way this choice works. I'll hit the hyphen and then uh, this little kind of right arrow character, the sideways carrot character. And I'm going to type the name of the passage where I want this link to go. So I just hit intro and close the brackets. And you see this is blue now. So this is the text the player will see. You lose painfully, play again. And if they click that, it will take them to the intro passage. And when I close this passage, you'll see that this arrow here now goes both ways. So I can go from this passage to this one, back to this one. And let's edit the do not go into the cave. 
Susie wisely decides to avoid the very, the apparently very dangerous cave. She lives a long, fruitful, and bear free life. Create a new choice here. You win. Play again. And the same thing, the hyphen, little arrow marker, go to the intro passage. And now we have a very, very simple story. And if I hit this play button, we'll see how it works. And here we have it right here. Susie stands in front of a particularly ominous cave. Go into the cave. Do not go into the cave. Well, of course I'm going to go in. It sounds fun. Oh, eaten by a bear. I guess I can play again. Okay, this time I'm going to be smart, not go into the cave. And I win. So this is a very simple interactive story. Very easy to make. But uh, Twine actually lets you do a lot more. Uh, you can even do things like implement an inventory system. So maybe in your story, uh, there's a door that's locked. And the only way the player is allowed to go through it is if they'd acquired a key. And again, you can, you can manage all these things without having to write any code whatsoever. You just use the same kinds of little shortcuts that I showed you with like the open brackets. And there's a lot of documentation that will explain how to do those things. And just to give you an idea of how complex these games can get, here is a game called The Domovoy. And this is by a studio called Brave Mule uh, out of uh, Arkansas. And they were actually in Tulsa not too long ago showing off their new game, Southern Monsters, which looks great. But as you can see, we have text, we have music, we have uh, you know animated graphics back here. So these interactive fiction games can actually get much more complex uh, once you start learning how to use this system. And if you're comfortable with it, once you get far enough along, you can actually do things like implement uh, JavaScript and CSS so that you can do things like adding images and sound and making your games more interactive and interesting. So I would definitely recommend The Domovoy by Brave Mule. And since we're talking about it, you should also check out The Uncle Who Works for Nintendo. If you just Google that, you will find it as by Z Tull. You can find it on Itch.io. And The Uncle Who Works for Nintendo is a horror story uh, about, you know, the childhood friend that a lot of us have who claims they have an uncle who works for Nintendo. And even though it's all text and images and sound, it's surprisingly frightening. Like, it's legit scary. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking it out. So check out The Domovoy and The Uncle from Nintendo. And you'll be surprised at how interesting uh, these games can be. So that was just a quick look at Twine, which once again, you can find it at twinery.org. Start making your own stories. Uh, and what's great about Twine is it actually outputs these as HTML files that you can upload pretty much anywhere. So you can put it up on itch.io. And you know, if you think you've made a really good one, I mean, you could even charge money for it. So definitely check this out. It's one of the easiest ways you can get into uh, learning game design and game development. And it's uh, just one of my favorite things to play with. So check it out. It's Twine. And I hope we will see you at the next Tulsa Game Developers Meeting here in Tulsa.